Hi everyone. Today we're going to go to 3D anthropometrics and to be more specific, how to use the tool Mannequin for multidimensional analysis and wearable design. Well, the ellipse tool is very useful to compare two measures. It could still be limiting the research for more complex geometry. In some cases, more than two measures are relevant for your design process. In that case, multivariate anthropometry could be used to find correlation between multiple parameters. In a multivariate study, those parameters are plotted over different axes, creating a virtual cloud of data. A computer model can find a correlation within this cloud of data to create new combined parameters, which we call principal components. In 3D anthropometrics, this multivariate analysis is used to analyze the variation in body shape of humans. We then call it statistical shape modeling. This statistical model represents the variation of human body shapes along a series of principal component axes. This allows for a user to essentially turn buttons to change a functional parameter, such as face length or head breadth, and see how this affects the shape of other related parameters. Whereas in 1D and 2D anthropometry, we work with average and standard deviation as a statistical summary. In 3D, you have the statistical shape model as a summary. This 3D shape model brings many advantages in the design process. So what is the added benefit from a statistical shape model compared to existing traditional mannequins? Before DNet's 3D anthropometrics tool existed, Designers already had access to 3D mannequins, such as the EN960 head mannequin, that uses 1D data to shape the head, and a full body mannequin that has a standard shape for each body part and is adaptable in its size. What these mannequins lack, however, is data about body features, such as eye sockets, mouth and ears, but also shape definitions in the full body. This extra information of your data is useful for wearable design, such as work garments, respiratory masks, and cycling helmets. But the mannequins were also very limited in shape variations, such as thigh thickness, waist circumference, and mouth width. If you want to learn more about 3D anthropometry, Watch part 2 of this module, or watch an extended lecture by Toon Huismans on the DNet user forum. Before you start using the tool, you need to define your design purpose. Like mentioned earlier in this module series, there are different methods of deciding on product parameters and sizing options. Let's go over a few approaches. In ego design, you want to create a product that is just for yourself or one individual person. You can use that person's body measurements to create a digital mannequin. If you want to design for all users, you're going to want to make a mannequin for the boundary cases or decide on boundary cases using percentile values. Maybe you already used the ellipse tool to decide on size groups. You can now use the mannequin tool to create a digital representation for each group. Currently, there are only two databases available for the mannequin tool. The Caesar database contains body scans of Dutch subjects ranging from the age of 18 to 66 years old. The second database by Goto contains head scans of Dutch children between the age of half to seven years old. The availability of populations for the mannequin tool will be extended over time. 
The first step in order to create a mannequin for your user or user group is to define the fixed measures. You can add as many measures as you want to define your boundary conditions. In case you have data available for your direct persona, it is recommended to insert as many data as possible to get an accurate representation. On the other hand, if you want your mannequin to represent a group of people, it is recommended to stick to about two or three measures that are critical for human product interaction. The ellipse plot in the window below can help you to make a decision on your measure input, for example by finding the average value or a certain percentile value. To add a persona, click the plus button. Remember that the shape model will calculate the remaining body measures according to the principal component analysis and present you with an average representation of the population. When you have filled out the input data for all measures, Dnet will automatically create a mannequin. Using these options, you can look at the mannequin from different angles. If you want to add a second persona mannequin, click the plus button again and fill out new measures. These mannequins can be used for ego design or as a representation of a target or size group. But for that second option, you also have the possibility to create a representative model for a group. Click the plus button again and select group. To view the percentile values of your input measures, click show statistics. Now enter the measurement range for this group that enclose the subpopulation that you want. For example, the P5 to P95 range of body mass and chest circumference of people with a stature from 1700 to 1800 millimeters. I am using the ellipse to extract those values. You can also keep some measures constant. The last mannequin is now the average representation of your group. When you click Add Mannequin, you can also create a maximum and minimum representation of your group based on the measures of your choice. Those mannequins are now also shown in your ellipse. You can find the statistics of your study in this window and download your mannequin and ellipse chart to use in your design process. In the previous module, we found that within one size of helmet based on head circumference, the spread of related dimensions varies greatly. This means that the overall head shape within a group must also vary greatly. So we're going to perform a size-based shape analysis with the mannequin tool. I am going to focus this study on a children's helmet. Once again, I will use a size chart or size recommendation to investigate the variety of head shapes of the targeted user. This helmet is sold online for both boys and girls of the age of 3 to 8 years old. According to their size chart, this equals to an approximate head circumference ratio of 48 to 54 centimeters. Interestingly, the supplier provides us with two different measurement methods, in which already indicating multiple shapes of the head. However, the supplier advises to use the maximum value of the two, disregarding which one of the two it is. Will this have an effect on the fit of the helmet? We start off by selecting the target population. Next, we add a group to represent the user group, inserting the range of head circumference. This turns out to include 93% of the age range. The fact that 7% of the population is excluded 
is not likely to cause any problems, as the supplier included a size chart. The next thing that I'm going to do is to add a measure of head breadth to analyze the variation of this size factor in the user group. For this, I'm going to read the value of P1 and P99 from the ellipse chart. Because head breadth is not measured by the customer before purchase, I want the helmet to fit almost all users. Consequently, the head depth is also relevant when analyzing shape differences. After all, when head circumference remains constant, a reduced head breadth results in an increased head depth. Besides an average representation, I want to simulate a long and a wide head shape. First, let's try to do this with the group mannequins. I am selecting the average head circumference with the maximum head breadth and the minimum head depth. However, when I plot the ellipse with head breadth and head depth, I can see that the persona falls out of the 95% confidence interval. Since we have interdependent variables in our study, we should limit the number of input values to avoid mismatching measurement values. I will do this by creating personas and setting the measures one at a time. And I delete the measure of head circumference. After all, the whole range of head circumference is included in my study. To find the largest ratio between head depth and head breadth, I look at the left top and right bottom corner of the ellipse and create personas to match the values. By reading out the left bottom and right top corner on the other hand, I get personas of maximum and minimum head circumferences. When comparing the mannequins from a top viewpoint, the variety in perimeter shape becomes clearly visible. When you look at it from a frontal viewpoint, you can also notice some variety in head height. If you want to be thorough, you can include this measure in your study as well by simply adding head height as a new measure. Now that I've finished creating my mannequins, I will export them for further use. For example, for the use of ParaView to extract cut sections of my personas. That was it for today, and I will see you in the next video.